Welcome to another video from theplayersaid.com. My name's Alexander. And I'm Grant. And welcome to our final monthly debrief for 2022, even though you're watching this in 2023. Uh, so this is our December monthly debrief. Uh, our 24th that we've ever yeah. recorded. Two full two years. Two full years. Amazing. That's, that's the longest running series that we've ever stuck to. We've started, started some uh, other series and it's like we get two or three videos and we get tired of doing them and, yeah. and we if you, stop. And if you're a content creator, you'll know exactly what we're talking about. Yeah. Uh, it's a lot of work. It, well, and the commitment to certain things that are very difficult and time consuming and laborious is hard yeah. when this is not a full time job. Right. Yeah. And, and you want, if you do those series, you want to do them well. Yeah. And you want to, I, I always worry, I, I, I suffer from fear of just making a crucially huge mistake and teaching everybody a game wrong. I see. <laughs> That's I, my biggest fear. I care less about that. It, to me, it's the fatigue. Of oh, like that, absolutely. Getting it out, doing it, yep. putting it away, getting it out, doing it again, because I don't yep. have the physical space to set that up. So it's, yep. that's a tough one. But thank you very much for sticking uh, with us yeah. through two years of this. Uh, and this video is sponsored by Noble Knight Games. So more from them later, we're very appreciative of them. But uh, December turned out to be, we turned out to play a lot of games in December. We actually did, but we kind of crammed them in near the end, yes, we, which was funny. We, uh, we had bad weather. Yes. We had the one, the as did a lot of people, right? storm of the century here in Indiana, and we got a grand total of three and a half, maybe four inches. Yeah. It's we had sad. We had no amount of snow. It was just freezing, freezing cold for like three or four days straight. And literally, we stayed inside for those three days. Oh, yeah. I don't think we left the house at all. Yeah, I maybe, like, took my trash out, and that was it. Yeah. And, and even then, it was like... Ugh. Yeah, it was hard. I did I did the trash, too, and I was like, dang. And all the Canadians are like... Meh, meh, meh. Yeah, yeah okay, right. or, that's nothing. Let's get out of here with But that. because of that, and then I think because of another family thing we had going on, we, we really didn't do a lot of gaming. We gamed on the first day of the month. Yep. Literally, 12-1, we, we bopped out a, a couple of games... And then, well, then we'd then we'd had plans with Jacob and Russ. To we had play, sickness that. Uh, what were we gonna play? J John Company Third Edition, and then what else? We were gonna play Corrupt Bargain, maybe. Corrupt Bargain from Decision Games, which we still but, need to play. Uh, um, sickness got in the way of that, unfortunately. Yep. So I hope everyone's feeling better. Not about COVID, that. just yeah, just sickness. everything else. Uh, so that so yeah, one of our weekends fell through, and then we had planned. What Grant referred to as a game of Palooza, yeah, and uh, that, and then like it was planned for like the, and that was the week where they were like, oh, winter storm, don't go outside. Yeah, and I was yeah. Like, oh man. But then we did get a game of Palooza at the end of the year. I yeah. think it was the Friday before Christmas. No, the Friday before, uh, before New Year's. New Year's. Yeah, it was like the twenty. I was off. Eighth or you were off. I came over here like I think I was here at nine o'clock. And you left I didn't at nine leave until like nine o'clock, and we played. I think it was like four full games. Yes. Now they were small games, but they were games. But they were games nonetheless, and they were cool games. And then we shot some video. I don't remember yes. what the video we shot. And then we played. Uh, we played some games with our family on on Christmas Eve. We did, well. yeah. Always a good time with our brother-in-law and our father-in-law. Yes. And yeah, so, I wanted to do more of that too, but we got one game, and that's fine. Yes, and it was it was, right. it was a so, good game. I enjoyed it. So yeah, it, uh, it. I think I enjoyed that game more than you did enjoyed that game. I think I enjoyed. I won that game. I enjoyed. You it. did win it. I thought it was cool. That yeah. was a very cool game. It's uh, that. Yeah. All right. Well, let's let's talk about some of what we got gaming here. Okay. Because we had planned to play a lot of games, and then it looked like we weren't going to get any in, and then we ended up getting a lot, and I was like, okay, cool. <laughs> it was nice but we did get some of the ones that we didn't talk about or plan to to get played. But that's okay. So I think first day of the month mm -hmm. was. was Undaunted Stalingrad. Yes. Uh, if you've played Undaunted, this is Undaunted on steroids, right? Mm -hmm. It's the, the same core game in it, but it has a massive amount of tiles. Half the terrain is destructible, and it's you have these legacy decks, mm -hmm. and your guys from game to game and scenario to scenario might get better or they might get worse and then there's or like markedly worse <laughs> and then there's like a bunch of other stuff that you like unlock that we haven't even seen mm -mm. Uh, so there's a lot to like in here we played we actually played only one scenario but we, we played, played twice, a yeah. we played it twice we played a kind of a warm up game because it had been probably a year since we played undaunted and we so we did a warm up game you decidedly beat me 
And then when the game counted for real, after I had warmed up, <laughs> I beat you. But not decidedly, we both kind of beat each other up. Yes. But that's part of what we liked about the game. It's very Stalingrad-like. Yes. Very attritional. So there's a lot more of this that we're going to play. Yeah. But it was, uh, you know, after you complete that first mission, you start getting into the campaign stuff. And it's just cool. Because Undaunted's yeah. a great system. It's really nice, beginner-friendly, little mm -hmm. deck building, little tactical board. But then when you start adding in the legacy elements, oof, that's choice. Yeah. Like, we play a lot yeah. of Gloomhaven that has some of those similar like. feels to it. Yeah. So that is right up our alley. Absolutely. So then, uh, gosh, yeah, then we had a break, right? Yeah, we didn't play we didn't for like play anything. two weeks. Was, and so I think the next game we played was on Christmas Eve. Yeah. And it's, it's not a war game. Incredible. Not a war game, uh, but an area control game. It looks like a war game. Yeah. So uh, Dune, Arrakis, Dawn of Fremen from uh, Gale Force 9. Yes. I, I liked this game a lot. It's, a, it's an area control game. Every time we play a game with Dune in it, there's got to be some kind of backstabbing, trickery, alliance building, alliance breaking. It's just cutthroat. Yeah, yeah. And this game has all of that in spades. It, it, at its heart, it's an area control game, and you get some resources, and you're trying to ultimately collect the number of resources you need to build, is it two sieges or three three sieges? You just need three on your three. own to start to, to win, or you might need five or six as, a, as an alliance. Um, the only thing I didn't like about this game, love the combat. The combat was deterministic, right? You, yes, very. You totaled up your forces and your forces. There were no like cards or dice involved in that. So I actually like that, and usually I hate deterministic combat. And deterministic combat, I have found out, turns a lot of people on. Oh, yeah. It's very interesting. Well, because it takes the the opportunity to, to win. Yeah, you you have to be good. Yeah, you, you there you go. You can't you actually have to know what you're doing. Yeah, you can't keep rolling sixes and win the game. Um, but it, I really liked that part of it, but I, I think the... The best part of the game was the trying to work together to beat one person for the moment so that you could take advantage of that on your turn. Yeah. Very interesting. Um, really liked it. And the scavenging deck was very cool. You bought this at Gen Con, is that right? I did, yep. Because I remember we were at the Gale Force 9 booth and they had this set up and they were demoing it. Uh -huh. And we just it looked very cool. Oh, yeah. And it was very cool. Because this, this is a prelude to Dune. Like yes. It's, each of you are, are kind it's of. It's probably different. like a thousand years before. I, it yeah. doesn't really say, but. Yeah, or it could be like a week before. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> like you are different factions of Fremen, and it's mm -hmm. fighting for supremacy of the desert. Yeah. And that's, so there's no, you know, there's no cities, there's no House of Trades or Harkonnens. It's like just Fremen in the desert. It's all Fremen against you. Yep. But, Riding worms and collecting. Very you know. neat area control, resource control, mm -hmm. resource management, and, and, yeah. and like like a lot of Dune games, like there are a couple of very powerful things, and the ornithopter, yeah, right, like broken. If you get that, that you is got a it. huge asset. Yeah, and everyone else is now suddenly like, get that guy. Well, it, it was funny because you used it, I think, three times, and I think by that third time, we were all. Like, man, that was just That's, too good. You, like, can't let someone have it the whole time. Yeah. Because you can go and take it from them, and it is brutal. Well, you can go try to kill them, but you're going to place it such that that's nigh impossible. Yes. Just the way the game works. So it's one of those things that you can't let someone else get that, but it's random, right? It's it's a scavenge thing. Yeah, like, so, who, who gets it? It's like, ugh. But I... I, I Weirdly, I also really liked the deterministic combat. It was I a did. Nice break. Yep. We don't play a lot of games that have that. Yep. And, and it, I think that's why I like it, because we don't do it a lot. Yeah. And so it was really cool to be like, it's quite puzzly, so you're like, cool. Yeah. I can go here and I know that I'm guaranteed a victory because I threaten from this that I can swing in. Yep. So they'll just capitulate without me having to do that, or they yep. might call my bluff, and then I might have to weaken myself elsewhere to like actually finish that off. Or, yeah, or, it or it's, fun. And it's convincing other people to like, hey, yep. help me out in this, or hey, don't help them. Right. You don't have to help me, but don't help them. Yeah, please. right. That's always fun. And we saw both those things happen. The, the other thing I really liked about the game was the water debt concept. Yes, that when you cool. When you attacked me and defeated me, you had to give me 
uh, one of your water debts. And that, in essence, acted, it, it had dual purpose. It could act as a currency if you had, I think it was ever, was it three or four of the if, same? If you had three or five, you could, you could trade, trade them, them in for, for resources. Of resources. Three, you get one, and five, you got like two. Or I something more, more, more than three, that. Three gets you two and four gets you like or three of any. Or you can cancel an attack yeah. from the water debts you have that match the person attacking you. That was really interesting because there were, there were times that I'm like, oh crap, you've got two of my water debts now. I can't attack you. Or I've got to bluff you and attack yes. here when I really want to attack across the board. And, and like they'll see that and be like, yeah, all right. You can waste yeah. your stuff over Take here. Take it, yeah. And you you only have a certain amount of actions, right? It's... It's ship, it's take a scavenge card, or it's attack. Yeah. And you can never attack more than once in, a, in your two actions. No, you, you definitely can. Oh, could you? Okay, yeah, I'm forgetting. It's, it's scavenge attack is your first action, one of those two. Right. And the second action is attack, attack or, or ship. ship. Okay, you're right. But anyway, fun game. Enjoyed really, it. Really, really good. V very cool concepts. Very, and di very, yeah. Enjoyed it. Yeah, that was fun. And it was only 45 bucks, which yeah. is... And... and not overproduced, right? Everything was cardboard, flat. They could have put minis in there. It would have made it a lot better. But it's like a good old-fashioned $40 board game. Oh, yeah. That, and really enjoyable. How it used to be eight years ago. Yeah, I think everybody would have replayed that game. Yes. Even our father-in-law. Yes. So. Then, then I think, so I think, uh, get, we're on to the game of Palooza. No, that's not yep. true. On uh, Unboxing Day, I played a Legendary Encounters, which is an alien-themed deck-building game. Played this with a family friend of ours. And he, he's not a gamer? No. Okay. He is not a gamer. And he enjoyed this? Yes. It's a fun game. He, really is. But he, he enjoyed it because he likes the movies. Yeah. Right? There you go. We've, yep. I've, he, he, I'm slowly trying to convert him to gaming. We played Blood Rage. Mm -hmm. We played Giant Killer Robots. And now we played this. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Next you need to get him a war game. Yeah. Do a victory... <laughs> Awaits or whatever. We're not there quite yet. Not but, yet. Okay. But that's the end goal. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I always love this game. Yeah. We've played this a trillion times. We've probably of, played that game forty times. I mean, and yes. we've won maybe twice, two or three maybe. times. <laughs> like yeah. it's so... And you said you won. We did. We yeah. won. Beginner's luck on his part. He like did a great job, and his me was like futzing around, not doing yeah. a good job. <laughs> but that's a fun game. Yeah. Uh, always fun. Luck Best luck. part of that game is you're choosing your your character so you can get a special ability. And I, some of them are really good. Some of them are really good, but they're very niche. Yeah. Some of them are not great, but they're very, they're nice to have. I, I don't know. It, it, it's fun. I, I like just, it. Just it's very hard. Just a fun game. Very hard. And absolutely in love with the theme of it too. Yeah. It's yeah, always yeah. Play. So then the next four games we played all on one day and yes. they were all small format, quick, you know, 30 to 90 minute games. Flashpoint South China Sea. Excellent game. We really enjoyed played that. Played a prototype event in 2017. I yep. actually played this uh, a month or a couple of months ago with Ed. Mm -hmm. So I was able to teach you how to get into yeah, it much yeah, yeah. easier, which was nice. Although it's like a full page rule book. Like it wouldn't well, have been difficult anyway. And the game plays in 45 minutes. I mean, yep. it's 30 to 45 minutes and it's brutal. I mean, it, it is very hard. Yes. I think it's very hard for both sides, but it's particularly hard for the US. <laughs> yes. But it's still fun. And I felt like I had. I was in the game the whole time until kind of the very end. I'm like, oh, there's just no way I can win that because you had, but it's fun. Yeah, it's a long. good game. Card driven game about area control and area influence, not area control, but area influence. And it, it's cool. It's yes. a very nice concept. It, perfect little lunchtime game yep. from the Flashpoint series from GMT. You know, the, I, exactly what it says on the tin. My wife has agreed to play that with me. And we're going to probably maybe even play it this weekend. So we'll see how it goes. So the next games that we played, a couple, yep. couple, couple little games. I love these little games in a, in a small box. 12 to 12, I'm going to try to say this again. Las Navas de Tolosa. This is from Draco Ideas. A little abstract uh, war game. Has a nine card deck. Yes. And each side has like 20, 20 units. And they're spaced out on this board. You can kind of see it on the on the back. And we have a video coming out on this. Yep. Really slick, designed by Pablo Sands. Love the nine card deck because each player gets three cards. So that's six. The remaining three are in the battle deck. And one of those cards you have to use for initiative. They're dual purpose cards. So 
the top is the Muslims, the bottom is the Christians. So when I'm the Christians, I'm playing the, the Christian part of the card. And it's about trying to get the most actions you can, but also really keeping that attack deck stacked in your favor. And you can't do both. And you can't great. do both. So it's, it's just fun. I enjoyed this a lot. Yeah. I, I thought this was a very fun game, very well done. And I looked online, it's like $30. I mean, it's just a yeah. little game that... And it's, it's beautiful, and like by the said, way. It's quite abstract. We don't play a lot of games like that. Right. And so it was well, and a nice, it's, refreshing. It's challenge. abstract because there's columns, right? And you have units in those columns. And in order to, you have to advance and then attack, right? You and can it, yeah, attack and, and straight it, ahead. It's a lot of thinking yeah. about things spatially. And you've and, got some archers that can shoot a little bit, you've got cavalry that can charge. It's just a lot of fun. Yeah. Very asymmetric. Each side is very oh, yes. different. Um, in, the, in a really good way. In a really good way. I enjoyed that one. Um, the next one we played was Tetrarchia, also, and this is second edition, from uh, Draco Ideas. This is a, I'm going to call it a pandemic style yes. uh, cooperative board game. Where yes. we are playing the, Tetrarchia means rule of four, it's four emperors, each of us controlled two, and we're running around trying to quell revolts and unrest. And it can play from one to four, so right. You, you could you can do as many or as few as you want. You could also, yeah, you can play solo. So you said that one to four. Um, this includes the Ducks expansion, which we didn't necessarily use, but yeah. it it adds some cool things. I, I really enjoyed it. You run around trying to keep areas clear of revolts, yeah, and then you have to go into the borders and secure the borders for each of the six regions, I believe. And if you secure all six re borders, you win you the game. Win. But if you you know you can get overwhelmed with revolts, yeah. there's barbarian armies that will get in, and if any of them gets to Rome, gets to Rome, you can be dead. You can lose the game that way. I, I like. I really enjoyed that game. It was like, fun. I really enjoyed that game. Yeah, it there's nothing not to fun like. Fun little game. Yep. It plays in thirty minutes, forty minutes, yep. and it's a co-op as well, mm -hmm. which is really nice. Sometimes you don't want to slog it out. That's a game yeah. that you take to work and you harangue your little work colleagues and play it on a lunch break and you yeah. have a good time. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was also really well produced. Considering what it is. A really, I mean, very small board, but it looks great. All wooden pieces, really nice. Yeah. I, I enjoyed it. And then it had dice. It had a, one of the dice was a, had Roman numerals on it, which is always cool. Yeah. The other dice, I think, was just, the... Yeah, it was just regular. Was it a D6? Similar. Just a regular D6. So anyway, combat was pretty cool. I, I enjoyed it. I, I thought it was a fun game. Uh, the, the final game we played on that day, uh, this is a Kickstarter that I backed and have been waiting on for, for two years. Free at Last, The Struggle for Equality. This is a card-driven game designed by Ted Torgerson and Damon Stone, I believe. Yes. So it's on the civil rights uh, movement of the 1960s. Very cool concept. Yes. Very cool... Um, there's some very cool mechanics. It is cooperative, yes. but it can be competitive. Yeah, we played a competitive the, mode. We played the cooperative. I really liked what we were doing. We're trying to, to complete what they called projects, I believe it yep. was. And they were things like a march or a sit-in or a... Yeah, it was like... Whatever. It was different forms of like civil rights Resistance. demonstrations yeah. and things like that. And you had to complete those. You had to play some runs of cards and you could play on each other's runs. Or sometimes it was sets or yep. it was color matching, yep. depending on what type of project. A, a, a lot of really cool stuff in here. This is almost an excellent game. Yeah. But it is in dire need of second edition rules, which it, they, I have been told, that they're working on. In the works. Yeah. And if they can sort that out. You, this is well worth us revisiting because I loved what we were doing. Yeah, like agreed. But gleaning it from the rules is almost impossible. Yeah, it, it, like it's, uh, well, we figured it out because we've played a lot of games and we spent a long time reading. We, that we rules. did. We like, we probably played this game for two and a half, almost three hours, and yeah. most of that was just trying to understand things. <laughs> so the the rules I f I think really let the game down. Yes. Um, the rule book. The rule book. Was, there were a couple other things, and we talked about it in the video that you'll see. I don't want to beat a dead horse. But yeah, you go, go the, watch the it. March to Washington track was not labeled. One of my favorites. Um, no label anywhere. And then I looked for freedom tokens for a good ten minutes, and not mentioned in the rules at all. Couldn't find them anywhere. <laughs> so we finally figured it out. I don't remember how. 
Freedom Tokens, right. I think, was on BGG that we just like had to okay. figure it out. But the other stuff was like, no, I guess. So, so even with those problems, I, I think people have asked us on Twitter, I, I would actually recommend this game. I, I think once they fix the rules. Yeah. That's so what I'm saying. Wait, wait for second edition rules. Right. And absolutely. Because, like you said, yes. what we were doing was really, yep. really enjoyable. It was so cool. The, and again, because it's very different from what we normally do. Yeah. The, the level of cooperation of getting a united front together and helping and supporting each other yeah. to get a goal is Should not what we box. do in wargaming typically. No. And in this, it was so rewarding of like, oh, in this phase, I can like... Uh, add a cube to you. Oh, I can use my leader to help you. Yeah. Out. Or I can play a card in this phase, and yep. you can do it to me, and we can help each other, and then we're going to resolve these. But it was so enjoyable doing yeah. that. A little bit puzzly, figuring out. Oh, should I do it now? Should I do it later? How can yeah. I help? What are the odds? How much can I push it? Yep. Really I, cool. I think we would say this game is made for three or more players. Yes. I, I think the, it can play. It can play it can. up to six. Yeah, I, but I think you the, want, yeah, four players the is more the better. Sweet. Four is going to be the best because you have a hand of cards and sometimes you're looking for only white cards or you're looking for runs. Or only blue cards. Series. Or and, and it's, numbers. If I don't have any blue cards and I've got blue cards, I can't do anything. Yeah. So I have to rely on my teammates who represent opposing factions but still factions well, just working yeah, together factions with for civil rights. Sub-interests. Um, yeah. I, I, the more I, players, the more variety, the more you'll be able to be useful. Right. I also, that's cool. I also thought in the two-player mode, if they could have allowed for a card discard, yeah. that would have helped. I think that would have made the game... Because literally, I chose my first... Not understanding everything about the game, I chose my first project and I could never complete my project. My leaders didn't help me. None of my advantages helped me. And we didn't really know what we were doing. I would have chose differently. But that's, but that's okay. But like, how many kids are going to play this in the classroom and the first time they play it, are they going to run into a thing like that, right? You don't yeah. want that. So like, Well, because then that discourages them. A rule book or a nice little play yeah. aid for, hey, for two players, do this, that, and this, mm -hmm. and keep bearing this in mind would be really nice. I, so. I still say that I would recommend that if the rule book was upgraded and, and, and the player aids were kind of helpful. and Once we get second edition rules, yeah. we'll be revisiting that oh, no immediately. Because it, it oh, yeah, definitely was so cool. much potential. So I think that was everything that we played. Yep, it I was. didn't do a lot of solitaire gaming on my own, if any, I don't think. I, I started just... to play uh, Volters Lead the Way from White Dog Games, and I I just for some reason couldn't get into it. So I'll, I'll revisit it, but my, mine that was, was all I tried. It was, a lot of, it was a lot of vacation, right? We were on yeah. holidays. And it was so cold, I like didn't even come down into my basement. I just yeah. <laughs> like when I was working, I just like was working in bed, so I just did not game. Got it. So that's I was being lazy. <laughs> uh, so looking towards January, mm -hmm. we got a lot of games that we want to play as we push to finish our, our yeah. kind of list of twenty twenty two games. We're not going to finish every game that we want to play, but we've no. got about five or six that we definitely want to finish. The goal, I think, is to finish them up in February and then get around to doing our top, kind of top ten list. Yes. So, the first one, which you can see on the We've table here, <laughs> is Siege of Mantua from uh, Hollenspiel. This is a two-player block war game on a very specific a uh, block action. A block war game from Hollenspiel? Ooh. Yeah, I think I... No one no one predicted that. Nope. No one expected... And, and actually, it's, it works really well. Yes. Really, there's a really lot of nice uniqueness little here. Blocks. Little block, they're huge. But yeah, yeah. This, uh, this was one that we're going to play in January. Mm -hmm. um, another one that I just got, and, and this is a game that I've anticipated for a while, is Votes for Women. So this is a card-driven style, area control, where you're, you're fighting for women's right to vote. And uh, it... it it just looks really interesting from Fort Circle Games. Um, one to four players, and it takes about an hour, hour and a half to play. I we'll definitely want to... We'll probably play a two-player, right? Yeah, my, it, that's my guess. Okay. We'll play a two-player. But I, I just think the game... A lot of wood in that box, right? Oh, it's, it's heavy. Yeah. For, for a two-inch box, it's... Actually, it's a one-inch box. This is really packed. So is, it's really designed by to... Tori Brown. Yep. Is, is it her first design? Or it is. Other ones? Yeah. If she's done another design, I'm, I'm not, sure, not, not sure I know okay. about it. But anyway, pretty cool trying to pass the uh, uh, women's such uh, suffrage movement. And I always, I like area control games mm -hmm. and a lot of election or vote-based games 
are yeah. that, just in a different iteration. So I'm very much looking yeah. forward to this because that's a style of game that I love. Well, and it just looks really cool. I mean, it's <laughs> yeah. got pieces. really cool pieces. <laughs> Might be a nightmare if you colorblind, though. Well, potentially. <laughs> but that that's a game we definitely want to want to try to play. Uh, another one, Skyhawk. Uh which is a solitaire game from Legion War Games. Just came out just before Christmas. Uh, this is one of those solitaire, air war, kind of roll on some charts, move around, make some Dick, decisions. Dixon and... and uh, yeah, uh, Bob Best and Lee yeah. Dixon. Is it Lee Dixon? S Steve, Steve Dixon. Dixon. Lee Dixon is... A, Who knows? A sports pundit or a I comedian no maybe in the UK? <laughs> Uh, I'm sure there's someone named Lee Dixon. Yes. Uh, anyway, I, I you know I, I've enjoyed mm -hmm. their other games that they've done. Target for today, Target for tonight. But the Vietnam theme and your uh, a much smaller kind of fighter bomber. Yeah. That's uh, cool and it's just appealing. Uh, a lot of these they're almost like role playing games sure. in a way. The more you kind of put into it and put on a soundtrack and make the explosion yeah, noises you, when you drop said the that bombs a lot. And yep. so I, I'm looking forward to this. It looks fun, right? Yeah. A little solo game. It does look cool. Uh, a, a, another solo game. Skies above Britain. Yeah, I, we played Skies above the Reich. Um, we played it cooperatively and you played it a lot solo. Could happen. But yeah, this one I've I have been sat watching a bunch of our patrons play this yeah. and post play-by-plays in our Slack channel, and I've been insanely jealous. Yeah. And I'm like, when? When and will we finally got it. I finally yeah. got it. So I'm very excited. Yeah. Uh, a very different... Like, it's... I'm very curious to see what it's like compared to the others, because yeah. mechanically it looks very different, mm -hmm. but... I, it's got some of the same g uh, g yeah, genetic but like, makeup. I th it, yeah, a very adjacent game from, yeah. from the previous one. So I'm very excited. Huge, very heavy box. Huge box uh, from Gina Willis and uh, Jerry White. I'm very excited for that one. The Jerry White. So uh, an another game that we have, uh, we received, we helped them with our Kickstarter campaign. We did an interview and, and they sent, uh, Cadet Games sent this. But this is Winway 72. So this is their second Vietnam-based uh, war game. It's Axis and Allies style. They have some miniatures. It, it, it really is a cool looking game. I, I, we love Vietnam War games. Yes, very, and this one, really good. it looks good. The map's great. The little minis are cool. I mean, they've got mini, miniature Hueys. They've got artillery. You've got... Uh, Infantry, tanks, yeah, B-52. B-52 bombers. One. You've got everything you want to see. They've they've got it in little plastic. Yep, and and I want to play it desperately. So we're going to try our best uh, to get this played. And this is this quite month. different from their other ones, which were almost tactical. They weren't tactical, but they were like I don't know, like operational level games. This is the Easter Offensive. Like it's a yeah. much larger scale than the other ones. Yeah, which was like the Yardrang Valley, I think. Yep, it was. Yeah. Uh, so. Th th that'll be interesting to see compared to that. There's the, as, as you can see well. all the cool little minis there at the on the box. So anyway, really cool looking game. I want to play that badly. And we've been talking about this one for months. We will get this played. This is at least the third month in a row, I think yeah, we mentioned it. But like, it will happen. I will set up the northern Leningrad map and we will do it. So a victory awaits my MMP. It'll happen. I promise it'll happen. We bought this at WBC. Or Yes. Got, Avoided to play it, it the whole time. And Just then, haven't uh, gotten around to it. I know we had talked about not buying any games <laughs> of, of Aggressor, so we were like, we're done with games. Uh, I think you mocked me for getting Maria and Frederick. I didn't mock you. Oh, no, I think you incessantly mocked me, and then so, you go out and you buy yes. another game. Uh, so this game is 1815 Scum of the Earth. Uh, this is a two-player... Wa Waterloo, or right? Solo, Isn't it the yeah, Battle of the Waterloo? Waterloo game. And it's like yeah. the Waterloo campaign. Got it. The progressor of the objectives that starts with, like, getting yourself out of exile as Napoleon. Okay. And then you, you know, go Build do your tier. bloodless coup in Paris and then go and do fight Waterloo. Yeah. And uh, so I did not know anything about this game. Mm -hmm. uh, I did an interview with the designer, like, uh, two years ago. Yes. And uh, I saw... Uh, Alex from Storm of Steel Wargaming uh, on Twitter, he, it. he bought this, and he, yeah, and the just the the artwork alone was oh, like, it's beautiful. Oh, I have to own this. Yeah, like the artwork on this 
is incredible. Yeah, we just played gorgeous. a lot of the Lord of the Rings living card game. Mm -hmm. We played a little bit of that Star Wars one. Do you remember that? that was yeah, like, I do. Oh, my stormtroopers are shooting an, a spaceship. It was yeah. kind of dumb. So I moved on from that. But this is a head-to-head -head game kind of like that. And it's really a card game, right? Oh, I mean, it's absolutely it's, a card game. I, I think it's but all that's in here the is... cards, you'll be very familiar with the layout of them. Okay. Okay. Uh, like those, are, those yeah. are the objectives. Looks many, much like many of the living card games we've played. And so uh, there's I, health tokens. It looks I just like think and it's just a bunch of cards. It's awesome. It's gonna be a fun, easy card Some game counters. to play. But also, there's a full solo bot that comes in the box. So yep. at worst, if we don't get well, to it, I, because I'd like the, to. because this plays like in 30 minutes, I want to make sure we play it a couple of times. And but I'm you know it's a great looking game. I'll I'm gonna try out the solo to see if it's worth it. Yeah. I've heard it, you know. A mixed bag because it's like a flow chart, but got it. Uh, if we play it two players, well, that'd be awesome. Well, the designer Tristan Hall was gracious enough to do an interview for me when they were doing the Kickstarter. So yes, and that's a 2022 game. It came out this year, this this past year, 2022. Yes, and I picked this up from Noble Knight Games. Yep, our sponsor. Uh, I you know I saw it and was like, oh, I have to own that. It's it's from a UK company, and I was like, oh well, yeah. let me check Noble Knight. Boom, they had it. Let's go. Yeah. So uh, we'll get it played. Yeah, Mobile Night Games. They're a sponsor of ours. Very grateful for them. Uh, Great for, company for sponsoring us. Uh, here's one of their cool ads. Wow, that was, that was really seamless. Uh, it, You're getting pretty good at that, isn't it? Great. Yeah, isn't your it so graphics, great? <laughs> your graphic skill. Just, it's, put, put, it's putting in those transitions. Yeah, wow. But yes. Uh, just don't do a screen wipe. No, no. You know, this isn't Star Wars. Yeah, it's not 1970s Star Wars. <laughs> I, I always love those transitions, though, from Star Wars. They're great. They're, fantastic. They're very uh, nostalgic. You know, people get mad at lens flare from like... Uh, yeah, I get mad at it, too. From Star Trek. I, I always think those things are cool. I just think it's cool. Uh, so anyway. I don't mind it. It's overdone. Yes. That's it's, the bit that gets it's, me. It's too much. I can't see what's going yeah. on. Yeah, right, because the lens flare. There's a blue light in front of it. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. anyway, kind of cool. Though. <laughs> so, uh, yes. Very grateful for them for sponsoring us. What do we got going on on Kickstarter? Yeah, so I, I did my War Game Watch feature, as each of you uh, have heard me say multiple times, for January. I think it had 18, uh, 17 games on it. So it had a lot. Of those 17, three were on Kickstarter or GameFound. The first is called the Heroic Stand series, Rourke's Drift, Men of Harlech, The Alamo, Final Assault, and Thermopylae, The Hot Gates from Danvers and Games. So it's a three game kind of series. I think you can buy the ones you want. But yes. You can also tag, you know, tag them all together and buy them. Um, quick 30, I think 40 minute playing uh, little card games. They look really interesting. Are they two player or are they solo? Um, I think you can do solo, but I think they are designed as two. Are two player. Okay. Um, and it ends on January the 11th. So we're shooting you, this on the 6th. A, a lot of the times you can get some of that late pledge stuff. So sure. Hopefully, it's worth having a look. Right. Uh, the next one is from our friends at Cadet Games. We already showed you uh, the Easter Offensive. Yep. Way 72. This one's called December 72. Linebacker 2, the historic B-52 strikes against North Vietnam. A lot of twos in that. A lot of twos. Um, from Cadet Games, it's currently on GameFound. It is a very cool looking game. I have a full interview on the blog if you want to get more detail about it. Fantastic looking miniatures. The different uh, heads up views that you use for the SAMs and the strikes. And, you know, one side's playing the U.S. who had a very rigid plan that failed and then later on the u.s can start making their own plans and then the nva are kind of a bit more reactive well the, yeah they're they're better at first and then they get weaker and the u.s is weak at first and gets stronger and it's about stopping but it's it's available on game found through january or february 24th so they're going to do a like a 60 day and, and a very uh, different campaign. style from those other two that they've previously released yes but it uh, but but frankly, it looks plastic plate. yeah, it looks really cool. Um, did I say a third? That it was just those two Kickstarters. Okay. One game found, one Kickstarter. So there's probably others that I. I I'm sure find, there's a million. But... Compass always have a new game coming out. Yeah. On there. 
Worthington often does as well. Yeah. If those guys would just let me know, I could include those things on my marketing, but you know, they don't let me know. And that's <laughs> fine. I have to find out after the fact sometimes. Which but yes, is fine. It's it's always worth going on and, and having a look to see because you can get some yeah. really good prices on some of those oh, yeah. games as well as if you effectively get them on pre order basically. Yep. So I think that's everything. everything. Well, there. let's talk about one more thing. Oh, uh, yeah. If 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 you hadn't heard, and and you probably haven't, so don't don't feel bad about it. We oh, we were awarded. Yes. Yeah. So we were awarded uh, a Charles S. Roberts Award. Yes. For Thank 2021. You very very much. Yeah. Everyone who voted. And and it's one of those things that it's voted on by fans of. Of war games, right? So they go in and they vote for the different categories. The category that we won, oh, we didn't win. We got the most votes. That that's how you win, right? Um, was for war game review and analysis, either a blog or a YouTube. We happen to have both, and we were up against some really great people. Moe's Gaming Table, uh, the Big Board. I think Kilroy uh, yes. was here. I think that was it, yeah. Really, really good, talented individuals, and we appreciate those that voted for us. We're honored. We're yeah, uh, it's, excited. Um, it's, it's so nice. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it feels good when you put time and effort into something and you yeah. someone says, oh, that's, that's not bad, and that's all we ever really... And it's, and it's cool because just seeing the different people who get nominated and stuff, Yeah, like, that's just a sliver of how many people are starting to like create blogs or do yeah. war game reviews, even written on BGG or starting YouTube channels. Much like we did yeah. almost seven, you know, seven years ago. That yeah. We just started with, it could have lasted six in, weeks. In, in my crappy little kitchen yep. with my buzzing fridge and the yep. awfully loud air conditioner and my little kids running around but, in the background. But the key is we started something. Yeah. We stuck with it. We had a modicum of success and grew. Uh, you know, our content was shared and spread around, and you know, now we're where we are I just, today. Yeah. Wherever that is, and we're, I, we're and I just want to like encourage everyone to like stick with it. Yeah, because I love going online, and it is like v genuinely, mm -hmm. it's the heyday of wargaming content online. There are so many people doing reviews. Yeah, and like playthroughs and like how to learn and teaching mm -hmm. videos or just like discussions 10 years ago none of that existed very like, few it was like i mean you had people you you had some but it not not but like, like it, it is today most of it was like forum discussions or it was calendale or it was like marco yeah like there was so few people doing and now it's like there's just so much more out there that like yeah. to enjoy and to share and to discuss yeah. and you can find something that you want out there and and I yep. I, I think I it's just awesome that that's taken well, up I, a lot. I I think the one thing that I think a lot about is that we've just stuck with it. Right? <laughs> yes. I, persistence. We're, we're persistent and I I think both of us have a lot of hobbies that we like and are you know you like to read, I enjoy sports, we both have families. Um, Both playing role playing. Games. I love role playing games, and there's only so much time. But we have consistently stuck with the wargaming stuff. Made it a priority. Yeah. Made it a priority. We do it. We have fun doing it, and we put content out. And you know, we appreciate the uh, votes uh, that uh, we received. So I thank hope you. Everyone else sticks with it too, because there are some great channels and yeah. websites coming up too. So yeah, I'm yeah. very grateful for everyone who like chimed in with a nomination for the Charlie. It means a lot. Was um, there something else you wanted to mention? Well, I thought we, because you had asked me before we started recording this of uh, things that we were going to do. Oh on yeah. The channel, and I was like, oh, it's like that. we it do like, every oh. year. Yeah, right. I think we do this every year. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, but I, it, so it's the end. This is the December wrap up. You're seeing this kind of at the beginning of January. Mm -hmm. We did our like kind of 2022 wrap up a few days ago. Uh, where we kind Our of retrospective. A little bit of a retrospective. Yeah, yeah. But looking forward to this year, because it's also been interesting on, on like Mastodon, on Twitter, on our Slack channel, a lot of people who have been talking about their wargaming goals and things like mm -hmm. that. Uh, and like my wargaming goals is just to like keep playing more games. Play more games, yeah. But it's like I, we can't physically play anymore because we dedicate so much time to it already. But like you had mentioned, like, hey, what do we want to do, or is there anything else that we want to do with the channel? Mm -hmm. Like, 
a new series or like some extra different content that we don't already do. And, and uh, you'd mentioned doing like a coin boot camp. Yeah. And because I love the coin series. Yes. And, and, and it's a great entryway into wargaming. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people look to it it's as a that. bridge and i think a lot of war gamers kind of point non-war gamers mm -hmm. towards that because you're like hey look it's an area control game yeah just kidding it's you're got a war now. it's got pretty little cubes and yeah you know draws people in a little bit so yeah we've talked about potentially doing whatever you want to call it boot boot camp workshop I, I i don't really care what we call it um but the idea is you would take a coin series game i think you've talked about Probably Andy and Abyss. Andy like and that. Abyss. Keep it simple to start with. I would take Liberty or Death, because I love Liberty or Death. But what we would do is kind of a five-part video series. The first part being just an overview of the game, the historical setting, kind of a summary of the different factions, what you're trying to do, how you're trying to do it, and, and what we like about it. And then the idea would be a 20 to 30 minute, maybe 40 minute, video for each of the factions going through their victory conditions, going through their commands, special activities, um, so that we can show you how they work, yeah, right? Or, Give, or, giving you an idea. Almost like a kind of a focused learning of like, so that yeah. if you were like, hey, I, I'm new to gaming, or I've never played this one before, and I'm gonna be playing like Fark in Andy and Abyss, yeah. boop, here's the Fark video, and it'll be like, you can do this, 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 and this. And so you can watch a 20 or 30 minute video and see a visual representation of yeah. this is what a march looks like. This is what uh, an ambush or a sabotage mm -hmm. or an assassinate looks like. And so that like, it's not just like texts and instructions. Right. Seeing it is almost yeah. always easier to then relate that to when you're yep. playing the game. So so I, I think that's what we're going to do. I think we're going to start it in February. I think that's what we've talked yeah, about. Yeah, I've got a lot of stuff to do in jam. Doing one or two of those videos a month. I, I mean, I might try to sit down and do do all five of them in one afternoon, but, but, but I be, might kill they'll myself. They'll be released yeah, a bit spaced oh, out a bit maybe. Uh, maybe every two or three weeks, but just something that would... Once again, reach out to those that might be interested, might want to get a feel, look how it works, how it's put into practice, and just share some you know, thoughts well, about those and, games. And it's one of those things where I like what we've discussed about that idea because you know I started doing a couple for Empire of the Sun, I started doing a couple for Fields of Fire. Yeah. And like those projects ran out of steam from a personal standpoint. I did Labyrinth. And there was like, way. you know, it, again, we've talked about this the logistics of setting it up and tearing it down every other day because I've got to do unboxing. It's hard. I've got to play some reviews. I've got to work. And, and it just like, it's like, ugh. And so those fall off. But with coin, first off, those are easier to set up and tear down because of the components. But also like knowing that this is a five part series, mm -hmm. to me, Having like that set fixed number is a, I don't know, maybe that's just like the way that I'm motivated and think, yeah. but it's a defined thing mm -hmm. instead of I just, I could just go on forever. Right, right. Where I'm like, oh, this is like, cool. I can do that. Yeah, yeah. I get, and it's like, mm -hmm. here's my checkbox of five videos. That, that I, I think, I like to think that I will f do that to completion. Mm -hmm. So I, I hope yeah. that I do. And uh, that's the goal. Because realistically, each of those factions has somewhere between three to five commands and three to five special activities. Some have more, some have less. Yeah. But they're, I mean, they they don't all need to be in-depth 20-minute discussions about well, each. And some of it's very simple. March. Right. I'm going to, yeah, rally. Here's what you do. Here's an example of you have a base. Here's what you do. Oh, if you don't have a base, here's what you do. I, pretty simple, right? I'm going to do mine. My ugly mug won't show up in the videos. I'm going to do it with my camera facing down. I don't know if you're going to use the, the uh, rig. Uh, probably, yeah. Um, I want to try to get mine in a little closer so that they can see it and kind of get the the feel, but we'll, we'll see how it goes. I We're going to try it. Yeah. We tried it with Labyrinth and uh, Empire of the Sun, and like Alexander said, kind of lost some steam, but, but we're going to yeah. try that. We'll, we'll, we'll see. Hopefully, people are like, we'll just finish wish, those ones. Yeah. Wish right. us luck, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Easier said than done. Well, I, I'm struggling to finish the Labyrinth one because I've only played the Jihadist like twice. I played the U.S. 20 times, whereas you could do the Jihadist pretty yeah. easy because you know those like the back of your hand. So that's kind of where I'm stuck. You know, I, I did the card play. I did the, um, the U.S. US and so, so anyway, 
okay. that's what we're going to try to do. We're going to try to do that. So yeah, that, that's a fun little extra thing that I think we're going to try to incorporate into 2023 so that we Not also... Not like we need any more yeah. videos, but we got tons of videos. Right. <laughs> and frankly, this year we're going to WBC again. We're going to go to Gen Con. We're going to go to Buckeye Game Fest. And I'm sure at each one of those, we'll yeah. shoot three to 10 videos that... We'll, and some of them will shoot 15. We shot like 15 videos at WBC, and yes, I, I see no reason and, not to do that again. And based on our release schedule, that's a full month's worth of content. Yeah, I mean, it's, <laughs> but that's important, right? Just to, to explore new games and look at those, those things. So anyway, yeah, we have a glut <laughs> of videos. Not going anywhere. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I just thought we'd kind of put some of those things out there of, of some mm -hmm. things that we were going on. So uh, we will move on to the main topic of today's discussion. Recommended by? Recommended by a gentleman called Larry. Larry is one of our patrons. If you wish to be able to suggest topics uh, for future monthly debriefs, if you're at our $5 patron level, I make a post every month, you can get on there and make a suggestion. And almost every month that I pick, or we pick a topic from there uh, so that's one way that you can kind of help uh, support the show, which we appreciate all of our patrons. We also get access to a Slack channel where we just chat all day long, and it's like very war game focused, but then there's also other channels. I just started, well, I'm in the process of starting a little book club, so oh, I'm going nice. to read with the old breed, and there's like okay. four or five other people who are hopefully going to read it too, nice. so that'll be fun. You're a nerd. Yep, I agree. Total nerd. <laughs> but, uh, you know... That, it, we appreciate everyone's support. Mm -hmm. It really helps make this channel kind of keep chugging forward. And uh, Because we don't have to come up with the ideas every month. Yeah, well, and it's, right? a, it's a way for us to provide the content that people you want. want. Yeah. Uh, and I hope that that resonates with people as well. Yeah. So, the topic today uh, was... All right, uh, how am I going to phrase this? <laughs> <laughs> we talked about We talked this. about this quite a bit. So, the, the, the suggestion was... What are essential like essential war, war games, games that people should own? Yeah. Right? So, like, if I if, if I had no games, right? Like these Starting were the from I scratch. Had, or if I owned a gate, if I owned like a board game cafe and I had a very small war yeah. game section, these are the ones that I would mm -hmm. have. Mm -hmm. uh, that, At least according to us. Yeah. Right? That That's going to be the difference. Yes. Some people are going to be like, what? This is <laughs> what are you doing? entirely taste based. Yeah. We like card driven games. Some of these have, well, or just like they make a lot of them, and a lot of them have a lot of staying power. Yeah. Uh, so your mileage is going to totally vary. So yep. perhaps before we jump into this, pause the video, go into the comments, yeah. and put what you think would be, you yeah. know, four or five like essential war games. Yeah, that's a good little exercise. Because before we jaundice your opinion, yeah. which we shouldn't, right? Go ahead and pause it and, and type what you think. Because that's, it's always, I love seeing other people's suggestions. Oh, absolutely. And that's part of, that's part of the reason I love doing this. Mm -hmm. It's because I'm like, hey, uh, I've played only this game. What are games like this? And people, there's five it's a or hobby ten. that people enjoy and yeah, they yeah. love to be like, oh, to share. this one's so good. Mm -hmm. and, and we all love doing that. So be it, please, what, what do you think is essential war games? Go and put that in the comments. So I think what we did is we agreed on five. Uh, we agreed Five on like six, six that I think. we thought would we would that we would put in we'd recommend together. One, two, three, four, five. Sure, five or six. I don't even know anymore. And then we kind of each of us chose uh, one. Yeah. I've got like this is my pick, and you. Yeah, pick. yeah, yeah. So let's. So, uh, well, I, do well, we want to start with our picks, like the the ones that you and I specifically, or do we want to start with the other? I, I, generic I, I, let's ones? leave those ones because those might okay. be a bit more. Okay, let's start uh, over here with this top one. Okay, because uh, we're gonna go we're gonna go hard out of the gate. Yeah, you're you're diving into the deep end of the pool with this, like we did in 2016, and we had no idea what we were doing, but we did it. And it is possible. And it, we had a blast doing it. We did it wrong, right? I took the Hawaii garrison in a down, down to uh, I can't even remember was it down to like Samoa, or the something Solomons like or it something. Like, and people online were making fun of me, and I'm like, you know what? I'm just trying to learn the game and have a good time. And that's fine. So, Empire of the Sun is a great essential war game. World War II, the entirety of the Pacific Theater. It's a card-driven game, mm -hmm. so you get the card-driven elements to it. But, but it's, it's also encounter. a hex-encounter war game. And, sh like, this game, 
will give you <sighs> dividends the more you put into it, right? It's a complicated game. It's a yep. deep game. It's a rich game. You will get a lot out of this if you're willing to dedicate time to it. Yep. Also, it can be as long as short as you want. Mm -hmm. So that's also a big bonus. There's a lot of stuff going on for this game. There's also all like the ancillary stuff you can tag into this. Yeah. With like South Pacific. Mm -hmm. You can get the little small Burma yep. snippet from, from C3I. C3I. There's like Plan Orange, which is like mm -hmm. a 1936 alternate history version of this. To, to me, those are almost approachable versions of this because you're only playing with a little bit. One it. little segment of it with 20 or 30 counters. You know, this has hundreds of counters mm -hmm. and. All, like, all over the place. Th this is like, it's, again, we dove into this. It is yeah, it possible, can be done. But yeah. like, you know, if this is the heaviest game that you own out of all these other essential ones, you're doing good. Well, and, and I also really like this game because I, I love listening to Mark Herman talk about it because I've heard him say, like a hand of cards that I would look at and be like, oh, girl, I got nothing I can do or, you know. Mark will be like, well, I will play this one and do this, and then I'll follow it up with this. And yeah. But he knows that because he's played this 40,000 times. And he's done a couple of editions of this, and he's worked on F Form uh, Formio. Or, no, that's the... What's the one called in this one? The solo bot. Well, there's, there's been a couple. Okay. Uh, I'm drawing I a don't blank. remember the name off of hand. Formio was, I think, uh, Pericles. Yeah, this one, had, it was Dang the it. Erasmus box. Erasmus, yep. That's the first one, so they come up with new ones, I okay. think. Okay. Anyway, it's it's a learning experience. You'll learn how to do the game. You'll learn how to use your cards. You'll learn, and and to me, that's what history is. Gaming history is about trying to understand the conditions they were under, and how can I either replicate or do better than they did. I also love the logistical supply concept in this game with the headquarters. I mean, sometimes it's hard to count out. I like playing yeah. on Vassal because you Vassal's the you Vassal click it and it's like. Boop, 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 Extremely good, which is way cool. But this, it's just cool. It's a, it's a fun game. It's interesting, very deep, and I think you can learn it in bite-sized chunks to kind of get what you need out of it, and then you can really play it. Yes. And we've, we've played this a, a dozen times, and it, some in very small snippets, you know, and or we've done the breaking the Bismarck barrier, or the, bur bur I mean. But this game is awesome. I would very, play this very, game very, at any very, time. Very good game. It needs a three inch box. I have no idea why it's in a two inch box or one inch box. Yeah. But <laughs> still a great game. Yes. And it's from GMT. And, and I, I think that's going to be something you're going to notice here because I think we, we were exposed to GMT early on and they make good games. They I make, mean, they just, they do. make some classics. It's yeah. true. With staying power. Speaking of which, on the complete other end of the complexity spectrum, Commands and Colors Napoleonics. Now, we had a discussion about uh, other Napoleon, uh, other Commands and Colors titles, things like Memoir 44 or Commands and Colors Ancients. Uh, some people would put Ancients on this list. I, I, I love because Ancients I, as well. I know that one is extremely popular. We just chose this one, I think, because we like it. Well, and this one also, to me, really feels like a war game. To, uh, to me, uh, it does. I think that's a very fair assessment. I, I think Memoir 44, I love it but I feel like I'm playing with a bunch of toys and there's nothing wrong with that. And it's more simplified. This man, I'm talking, each unit's different. If every unit type's different. Then you throw in the, the expansions where you're playing the, the Spanish or the, I mean, it's the Russians. It's just insane. Yeah. It's such a deep game in a simplified format and system. Yeah. I just think it's great. I think everybody should play these. There's so much fun about the cards. I mean, I can't draw a yeah. card to activate my love for my life, you, you know, but it, it, that's part of it. It's still a game. Yep. Uh, and uh, you would be excused if you did trade this out for, for ancients. ancients. That's totally fine. Either but, of those would be this good. this one, I think, is a, a little step up in the complexity. Yeah. And I, for me, it has a bit more, has a bit more legs because mm -hmm. of that. Well, and the, a bit more crunch in all the unit yeah. matrices and stuff. Well, and the complexity, I think, adds to the fun of it. I agree. I, a lot of games, that isn't always the case. Complexity sometimes is just about complexity. Like, oof, yeah. That one is just fun. And I think every war gamer should have that because that's a versatile tool as well. Yes. You can play that with non-war gamers, but you can also play it with grown yards who and just like good and games. And you can get... The like tactics and commanders, the leaders expansion. Yeah. You can get the epic expansion where you stick them both together and play massive well, Waterloo. Here's the yeah general marshal and tacticians. We have the Russian army, the Austrian army, 
think you have the Spanish army I've somewhere in the, there. I've got the Spanish and the Prussians, but I condensed them all into this into one box because they were taking up so much space. And, and the good news is, because whenever we highlight this game, people complain about, oh, it's not available. Well... GMT right now. <laughs> GMT just put it, added it onto a reprint. I think it's like the fifth or sixth time, so it's up on P500. So go ahead and commit to it, and you'll have your game in eighteen months or twenty four months, and you can stop yelling at us for recommending it because it's a it's a great game. Yep. There's a reason. Anytime a game gets to a more than a second or third edition, you know it's pretty good. Yeah, it doesn't sell that many copies just because it's a, a fun looking game. Agreed. It's, it's good. agreed. So next up, we have uh, a coin game. Yeah, we felt like we needed to add a coin game uh, t to the offerings. I, I frankly love the coin series. Yes. I think you do as well. Oh, without question. One of my favorite series. They are fantastic multiplayer games. They can play up to four players because there's four different factions. We have had some of our grandest wargaming moments playing a four-player game of coin from Gandhi to Fire in the Lake, to, to, I'm trying to think the other ones we've played four-player. Um, I've played a lot of four-player. Pendragon. I, I mean, Cuba Libre, Falling Sky. A distant Plane. A, a Distant Plane. Ooh. We've played, multi, there's some we still haven't played multiplayer, but we'll, we'll get that rectified, rectified someday. Yeah. I don't think Andy and Abyss we've played multiplayer. No, that's the only one. We've played this only two-player, and this is the first game in the system, and it's yeah. so good. Yes. I, I love it. And I, I think it's great. I picked Andy and Abyss for this list because because it was the first one, so it's kind of mm -hmm. like the cleanest. So, you know, some of the other ones add a lot of extra complexity to it. Yeah. It's a four-player war game. Not a ton of those out there. And, and it has a solo bot, so yes. you, can, you can play it alone to learn it and... And, and play it and, and have a good time. And it's still really tight to play. Yeah. It, it's painful at times. And the, it, you get all the coin hallmarks. Yeah, it. this is a second edition uh, copy of it. I also have a second yeah, edition. You, you know, the reality is, is you could put in Fire in the Lake. You could put in oh, yeah. Libre. You could put in Distant Plane. And, and that would be excusable. But I chose this one because it wasn't quite as complex as some of the other ones. So it's a great essential kind of core ball. And, and we actually had that discussion earlier. Should we put Cube Libre in there? Because that's typically seen as the gateway to coin, right? It's because it's effectively this, but small. Right, it's a smaller map, and I don't think it's less complex. Some of those factions are really no the the the, the war are the uh, the gangsters. I'm trying. I'm drawing a blank. They, the syndicate. Yes. I, I mean, they have some really cool mechanics. Very they aren't necessarily cool. simple. But there's only like 16 spaces on the whole yeah. board. Strategically, yeah. there's less to consider. Compared to Fire in the Lake, that which has, has like so much. six times as many spaces yeah. on the board, right? So that's why typically Cuba Libre is recommended as an entry game. I think this is a good entry point because I think it's the purest of the system, what Volca was trying to replicate and create because it's the first game in the series. Yeah. Everything else since then has has taken the core, but always added something to it or taken, a, you know, and that, that that's great. But I think this is a good starting point, and frankly, it's a fun as heck game. This is one I want to play four player. Uh, yeah, like badly. We gotta, we'll take this to a convention this year. Yeah, we'll we do played that. Fire in the Lake a lot four player. I want to, <laughs> I want to, I want to switch over to Andy and Abyss, or you know, in Falling Sky. I like Falling Sky. I know you don't like Falling Sky as much as favorite, I do, yeah. um, but it's still a good, good game. So next game on the list. So another GMT game. Imagine that. Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> Labyrinth. Uh, but a damn fine game. L Labyrinth is on my Volker Runky, who also did the coin game. So, this is a two player CDG point to point on the War on Terror. Mm. And it is a 10 out of 10 game. The theme. No doubt. Might not necessarily be for everyone, but the gameplay itself is so rich. Mm -hmm. It is so tense. And more than all of the other games that we're going to talk about today. This is a game where the players play each other, and a, a lot of other games it's like, oh, it's a simulation, or like, I'm yeah. trying to reenact something. It, this is like a sandbox. It's totally open to you, mm -hmm. and you can do whatever you want to do. I mean, much. there are certain things you're going to have to do, but I think you can do a lot of things that you don't necessarily have to do but like, that cause trouble for the yeah, other player. You can't be passive in this. No, you, this you, is you a gotta be out in this game. And the mouse will lose if yeah. they do nothing or they don't do enough. Yeah. And so, uh, uh, this is that's what I love the most about this game. 
you have to make the game work. Yeah. And it and it's so rewarding when you can get it all to kind of fire on all the cylinders where you're like doing all this stuff yep. and the other person's like trying to put out all the fires and it's so, such a great two player interaction. It's yeah. really good. The, the, I, I know the I was looking at the complexity. It it says it's a four. I would disagree with that. Not mechanically. Yes. But <laughs> how you do what you're supposed to do, it's much more complex than that. You've got to do certain things to get in position to do certain things. And if you don't do those, you're going to lose the game. So some of those things I'm talking about are when the jihadist starts dropping uh, terror plots after they have yeah. loose nukes and they potentially have a nuclear weapon, if you aren't doing certain things like throwing some of your cards to reserves, you're going to lose. Or, or like you're then like holding on to your three power cards. Yep. Because you can't use them proactively, you have to use them reactively because you know that they're going to drop some of those things yep. on you. Or if your funding gets cut as the jihadists and you don't try to get that back up, you're done. Yes. If, if as the U.S. you get bogged down uh, in, in regime change, you're done. You, you just There's certain things you've got to be good at, and it does take a while to get good at those things. That's, that's why it's such a good essential war yeah. game, because it's so rich. Yep. And... A game that will not be on this list is Twilight Struggle, but just like Twilight Struggle, if you have two newbies who play this and they play each other the whole time, you will progress at the same level yep. and it will always be a rewarding that, experience. That's what we did. Whereas if you have a new person playing an experienced player, yeah, you will get killed every time. And, and that's the hard thing because I, we have come up playing this together. Yes. We, this is our most played war game. No. Combat Commander. Combat Commander, Commander is. is. This is our second. But like... I would be remiss to play this with a lot of other people because I know that it would probably be imbalanced one way or the yeah, other. Yeah, that's true. And that's that's kind of, and maybe that's just me because I don't want to like have yeah. a bad experience. With sure. It. But I really like playing this with you because yeah. I know we have an equal level of experience yep. with it. Well, I know what you're trying to do, and you know what I'm trying to do. I mean, yes, yeah. it's just. I, I love this game. And not to mention, there's two two expansions yeah. for it. Forever War and The Awakening. Big old three-inch box. Yep. Fits all the expansions in. I got over it again here, and it is just a, a delight. Yep. One of my favorite war games of it, all time. It is definitely one of my favorites of all time. Uh, another one that I think we both agreed, once again, Combat Commander uh, from, from GMT. Combat Commander is a... It's not a card-driven, right? But it uses cards like a card-driven game, just a little differently. Your cards activate your units. Those cards then in turn act as your firing mechanism because you're pulling cards off the top. They also act as there are special events when certain cards are pulled and it's a tactical game. So you're, you're trying to meet objectives and scenarios. There are, in the base game, the Europe game, there's, I think there's 12 scenarios and then there's battle packs that add 20 more. And, 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 and there's a lot of battle packs. Yep. And, and then there's, there's big box expansions. Yep. Then there's Mediterranean and there's Pacific. We own all of them. We've played Europe the most. We've also done a lot of Mediterranean and we've played Pacific a couple of times. I really like Pacific because it feels different. Yeah, it but this does. is the classic, you know, this is mostly Russians versus Germans, Americans versus Germans. That That's it. You're not going to get Commonwealth. You're not nope, going to get all Italian. The so, so I just, I love this game. I, I've always loved it. I remember the first time I bought it um, and we played it, I thought, damn, that's fun. And because of that, we just kept playing it and playing it and playing it and, and it, had and a great time. It fits really well into this kind of mm -hmm. bunch of um, essential war games because it's very different, right? Yeah. This is West Front, well, and East Front, but like it's World War II in Europe. It's a tactical level hex encounter game, which none of the, none of the rest of these have been. And so it's a very different style of game and feel from a lot of the other ones that we've talked about today as well. I also feel like sometimes you have less control in this game, mm -hmm. but if you're a good player, that's okay. You can, you can bluff or you can do certain things to make it appear that you're, but you know, in the end, if you don't draw a fire card, you're, you're, hosed. you're in trouble. I'll never forget one of the scenarios we played. I literally just ran right up the middle and you couldn't draw a fire nope. card. And that, that's just sometimes the way it goes, yep. right? And you've had other things like that where I couldn't draw a move card or I couldn't do and, this. And, and, and people will poo-poo this game sometimes for that. And you're like, no, 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 no. It's not that he couldn't fire. He was firing the whole time. He was just a terrible shot. Right. And so, like, 
this is yeah. a game where you play it and it's fun as a game, and then at the end of it, you've got a great narrative and a story oh, yeah. that you told yeah. as you kind of piece that all back together. That's what I really, really like yep. about this and a lot yeah. of tactical games. Yeah, I really, really, really enjoy Combat Commander Europe. So there's a couple of games that we don't have here that we want to talk about. Yep. And there's a, a surprise one that I'm going to throw in. That we oh, yeah, that's fine, about. yeah. Uh, so, first one is Holland 44. A, a little more traditional Hex Encounter war games, right? Th that one is, for sure, uh, yeah. yeah. So, Holland 44, operational. It's Operation Market Garden. It's the whole of the thing. It uses Simonich's 40, or it's 40X system is what it's yeah. called. I mean, I still think about our play of that to this day. One yeah. of my favorite wargaming experiences of all time, it's a Bridge Too Far the movie in a box, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. It is so good. Mm -hmm. And it's it, it, and it's so... Uh, what I really like about that game is that the objectives are so clear to you mm -hmm. that it's like, yeah, I've got to I've got to hold these like pockets of paratroops yeah. and then I've got to drive 30 core up the road. That's the whole game. And doing it is incredibly it's difficult. Terribly difficult. But but that's okay. It, it's it's okay to be difficult. And, yes. And, and the thing I love about holding those pockets is you've only got a supply source that lasts for six turns or like, seven turns. You've got to get it done. <laughs> and if 30 Core doesn't get there and relieve them, guess what? They're fighting at half strength because they don't have supply. And I, I feel like that game, because I've watched a lot of people play it, I've played it at least one full-time solo, and then the other time I push stuff around, it's very hard for the allies. That's why that operation failed, right? It was one yeah, bridge, it was, it was it one was, bridge too it was many. Too much. And that plays out in the game. Now, it's winnable by the allies, but you have to do it well, and you have to do it right. And very efficient. And, and if 30 core isn't at certain points in the game at certain times, <laughs> might well you might as well just pack it up. But it's, it's fantastic fun. I'm also a little inclined to airborne operations sure. it's always something i think is interesting so that covers that pretty well so it's a little unique in that regard it's not every just, game has airdrops and air supply and and this it's just it's just a great game really I love really it. clean game the other one uh we want to talk about is rostov 41 in the scs system the yes. standard combat series and that's tough because at the moment it's like out of stock and out of production yeah, yeah. You can't get anywhere but like if that ever gets reprinted that is such a good game. Because it's a one mapper. One mapper, good low system density, yep. and standard combat series is such a good yeah. you know, introductory or like kind of standard hex encounter series. It's a great yeah. game. D Dean Essig created a very, very playable game in that or system in that in that series. And then this one was done by Ray Weiss. Yes. I thought he did a really good job. Very I, good job. Because it's an East Front game, so there's some of the concepts of lines of counters, but this game has a lot more maneuverability. And and it's not an overwhelming amount of counters. Right, so nice. it just feels a little more open, and I feel like, oh, I can try this. Now, it didn't work, but I tried it, and it was interesting. Yeah. But we really like that game. I, In fact, SES system, I think, is becoming one of my favorite yeah. gaming systems. And if you can't find that one... You know, there's dozens of others. Pick one on a topic that you like. Right? <coughs> the so the other What's one. What's the one you were going to add that I don't know? Uh, lamps are going out. Oh yeah, no doubt. Right? We don't have a World War One. Yeah, game. you threw a war. That's that from was, Compass Games, uh, and, and it's so good. Well, it's it it's you know we love Paths of Glory. Paths yes. of Glory is a fantastic game. The problem with Paths of Glory is it's like a twelve hour thing, very long, right? And it's awesome. Lamps takes all of that and condenses it down into about a three-hour game. Three and a half hour game. Four and, and it, a half hour game. Whatever. <laughs> it, it's much shorter. Comparatively, and yes. It's we really enjoyed good. it. We played both of those kind of within the same month. Yeah. And really, really enjoyed both of them. But Lamps, yeah, I thought, boy, anybody could play this. Yeah. Anybody could get the feel for this. Anybody could pick up this system it's just well done. It just incorporates so many elements from the economic yeah. to the It's, it's a bit tech. less complicated than Paths yeah. of Glory. It, it's really, really, really good. But it's, it's just a, eminently playable as it's well. It's an interesting game. And it feels yep. very World War I when you're doing it. And we, I, I remember our play, we beat the hell out of each other on the Western Front until about turn seven or eight. And then we decided, you know what, forget that. We're going out to the east. And we had a lot of fun out there moving around, chasing each other. Um, 
Yes. And I feel like that's kind of where the war is going to be won. Wow. Well, because the stalemate, if it goes your way, you can win the game that way, but it's so damn it, hard. It's, it's designed to not be winnable oh, on the West Front. It's, like, just it's so, so hard. It's so tight. It's, that, that's great. So, yeah, I've yeah that's, a, that that's a great one. I'm like, yeah, that's a really it's good It's a classic. Yeah. And we played the second edition copy. Yes. Had a mounted map board. Gorgeous. Really uh, it's still in my collection, and I, I I love it. I would never get rid of that game. So ever. then the uh, the ones we choose individual picks. Yeah, and here we kind of diverged. Yeah, we pull pull both of them up. Sure. We can we we pick solo games um, because I think solo gaming needs to be in everyone's uh, collection. I hedged my bets because this can be a two player game. No, it's true, and we've played that two player, and I enjoyed the crap out of it, but. The best, this is a solo game, you want to play the 15-hour campaign. Yeah. And playing a two-player game for 15 hours of this hard. would be a lot. And you want to play the 15-hour campaign because the rigors of a... How long was the Battle of Britain? The the actual Battle of Britain... The, the, three, like was, three weeks? It was a bit longer than that. Okay. Um, a cu couple months. But it's, I think you get um, it from Adler Targ all the way into like September. I think it's like two the, months. The reason I bring that up is... The first turn is vastly different from turn <laughs> oh, yeah. 15 because you just don't have the pilots and you don't have the aircraft and you're beat up and your radar is taken out. And start, and it's just, it's the, the fun of trying to plug those holes or exploit those holes as the Germans. And it's yeah. just, it's a very well, like, I have this as yeah, well. And the tactical stuff is fun, but the campaign stuff is what really yeah. elevates it. And, and that's what's awesome and, about and this. And it's really the redistribution of your stuff around... And Where's the Germans going to go? And, yeah, and like, where, do, where have they been? Yep. Where can I... I just love it. Yeah, it's I good. love this game. And, and I chose Lanzareth Ridge, uh, Battle of the Bulge from um, David Thompson and Dan Verson Games. This is the fourth volume in the Valiant Defense series. It's a solo game. I think you could play it cooperatively, but it's like... You'd just be doing less. Yeah. You know, it, it's a four... Uh, there's four turns, like four complete turns or attacks... And they each take about 30 to 35 minutes to get through. And you play through a deck of cards, right? Yep, you play through a deck of cards. And it's just, it's an interesting game. It's a great little management exercise of kind of moving your units around and your, your machine guns and your ammo, trying to make sure you can stem the tide historically about how the Germans attacked this Lands Earth Ridge on the first day of the Battle of the Bulge. And this is on a... Like a man level. Yeah, like, it's it's a single your one counter is, is a, a dude. single dude. Yep, and uh, each of them have different abilities. They have different skills, and you're trying to manage those. And you know, when you lose a certain unit, you're done. I mean, when you lose your command unit, you're you're done. But it it teaches so much about. I think that this defense. It's my favorite volume now in the Valiant Defense series. And ignore the front cover. The map in this game is, is gorgeous. Stunning. I, I agree. I'm not a fan of the front cover. It's just it's not, not for, me. for me. But the map, I mean, you and you can watch my videos. It, it's phenomenal. Like Niels Johansson. I just the, gorgeous. I cannot express to you how much the map makes a difference in this oh, game. Yeah, because it immerses you. It's beautiful, but like the little details in it mm -hmm. from like. The little trails that the Germans have like gone up, and there's like snow pushed to the side. Sure, yeah. And, like they have to get through a fence. Yeah, and it's the little cool. fence is on the map. Yep. And then you've got a guy, and he's got like a, a Browning machine gun. Yep. And you're like, my goodness, that dude with that Browning machine gun was looking at that fence, watching yep. little guys in Stahlhelms come towards him. That would have been terrifying. Terrifying. And, and and I that's I really loved. It's not often that a map does so much for a game. Yeah. But it really, really brought out some of those little like yep. moments and some of like the feeling of that game. And, yeah. and that was a huge, huge credit to that too. Well, and David's just a good designer. I don't care what anybody yeah. says. If they're not traditional <laughs> Hex Encounter War games, but they're good games. Undaunted's a good series. This is a good series. He just wanted Charlie for his design. Yeah, D David's right? just a good designer. I I'll fight anyone that, that <laughs> disagrees. David's a good guy, and he also just makes good, playable, fun games. Yes. And I've played, I have played every design that's a war game related design of his. I haven't played some of his others, but everyone that's a war game, we've either played together, I've played solo, 
or uh, yeah, it's, it's I just I love it. So I think everybody should have. Now you could pick any one of his designs and hat, but I think you need to have a solo game um, that's this immersive and this good. Yes. So these were good choices, I think. Good additions for yeah. that solo gamer. So there's obviously like a million other games that like were close or like could have been added to it. Yeah. Or it's again, it's this is a your taste list, right? How many games was that? We've got four here. I don't know where the one, other ones two, went. three, four, five, six, seven, seven eight, nine, ten. ten. So we gave you ten games. Yeah, that's a lot. We we gave you ten games. If you're looking to build a good collection, if, I don't think you can go wrong with any of those. If I went to those. my local board game store and they had those ten games in the board game library that I could get, I'd be like, "That's nice. You have yeah. nice games." Yep. Right. But yeah. You know, but again, this is a taste thing, right? So, so, what games would you add to the list? You might say, "Grant, there's no way I would put this in there, but I would put this other," and and that'd be fine. That's your taste, and yeah. I might agree with you. This was our thoughts. Where's Where's Great Battles of History, right? You yeah. can pick, especially those new deluxe editions they're putting out that have a, all the expansions in them. I would put SPQR on that one. I've right. had a blast with that one. So you you could you could pick one of those. Well, we have Julius Caesar sitting right there, right? Or, and, you know, uh, I've, I've got yeah, I've got Alexander back there. Yeah, I mean, I it's just you could, but yeah, GBOH, great system. You could put something like Successes from Phalanx, mm -hmm. like a big multiplayer war game. Yep. Those big massive Throw, ones. Throws miniatures you in could, there. You could do all sorts. Well, the other game that you can see on the show, Wild Blue Yonder, oh, I thought about adding. Yeah. Because oh. it's a card game, a right? Very it, yeah, it fits a very it, different niche than all these ones. And, and I was trying to kind of get a, a, a little variety in that. That's just a card game that plays in 15 minutes. 10 to 15 minutes. You play a game, guess what? You lose, you just set it back up and you play again. You you, you could and put you could put something like table battles in there, yep. right? From Hollywood. Table Street. battles is a great little system. Uh, just I just think there's a a good collection should have a varied amount of games from different designers, different genres, different elements. And I think these games that we gave you, card driven, hex encounter, solo, um, point to point maps asymmetric with coin and, and labyrinth. Yeah. I think we gave a good traditional hex encounter war games. We, we gave a couple yeah. of those. Unfortunately, they're you know. at your house, so we didn't have yeah, the boxes. Yeah, we didn't have the boxes. But, but I would throw something like uh, the BCS game we played, Air Court. I, Air I thought that yeah. game was awesome. It was very, very, very the, good. The concept of a blob, I, I still just laugh at that one today. It's But it's and, exactly it. And there's like a million games that we like haven't played that people right. will be like, oh. Why didn't you have this one on there? Well, <laughs> Where's ASL Starter Kit? Well, we haven't. Where's Sorry. the Russian campaign? Where's We have it up there. Yeah, where's World War Three? That one that Compass just From put Chadwick. out. From Chadwick. Frank like, Chadwick. People are like 10 yeah. out of 10 game. Right. But the, that's not necessarily a genre that is appealing like to us, but... But there are people who love it. I know. Right? And, and a lot of people who And love I want to play it. I just haven't. There's like a million games. So this is... Part yeah. of it is taste, but yep. I hope we gave a good kind of a cross-section of a good amount of things. Where's, where's Levy and Campaign, right? I, <laughs> I love Levy and Campaign because it's a completely different, unique You could put Elmer Evan on this list and... Yeah. I you couldn't go either. wrong. But that, that's, the, that's, the, that's the greatness in this hobby. I think everybody could yeah. create a different system that would have a different lean. If you're into ASL, you're probably going to have more. Let's put, let's and, put one of those. And in. that's fine. I, we have ASL. We have never played it. I'm ashamed to say it, but we have not played it. It's going to happen this year. So, 2023 is the year of ASL. Let, let's get it done. So, But I've had a good time putting this list together and, and kind of thinking through this. And yeah, and it was like, fun. A lot of these are ones that feature very highly in like my top... 10 or 20 mm -hmm. games of all time. Sure. And I think they would, like, at least one or two of those will appear on almost everyone's list. Yeah. Because some of them are just universally loved by people. Yep. And, and, and so I think, I th hopefully that was fun and interesting and helpful. And if it wasn't, yeah. sorry. If we'll it, do better. If it wasn't, put in the comments which games <laughs> you would have chosen. Yeah. Because, again, I'm like, I'm sure there's, there's some really obvious stuff that we, like, forgot. Oh, yeah. Right? There's just too many games to even remember all that. Well, had I had my whole collection in front of me when we were talking about it, yeah. I might have thought, oh, well, that's a game I've got to add. But we, unfortunately, I didn't do this at my house. We did it here. So that that's fine. Yes. But I, I always love doing these kind of lists because they're just fun to put together. I just like yeah. to think back to all these great games that we've played. Yes. Agreed. The dozens of great games Agreed. that we've played. So... 
uh, that was kind of our essential war games or must kind of have include in your big war game collection war game. Very different than your desert island games that we've yeah because those about. Are like although some of those game. on that list appeared on this list. Interestingly enough, did they? They did. Okay. Labyrinth was on there. Okay, no, yeah. I mean, but uh, anyway, a little different lean. I just think, uh, yeah, I like this idea. So thanks for recommending it, Larry, and I hope we did it justice. Yes. So appreciate everyone for tuning in to our monthly debrief. Two years down, we're we'll starting yeah. a new year next month. It, it is amazing to me that come this April, this will be seven years that we've done this. It's wild. It's honestly wild. It really is. Because I, I thought, I, I'm just going to be completely honest, I thought when we started it, now I should have known better because I'm a sticker. I always have been. What I mean by that is I typically stick, stick with it, stump right. something. But when we started, I don't think we had any idea what, what it could become or where we would go. We were just having fun. Yeah. And we're still having fun doing what we've been doing for seven years. And I, I think it's a testament to both of us that we've stuck with it for seven years. Because there's been some times where I'm like, man, we got other things we got to do. And it, here's, y you know. here's the thing with that. Because I, I agree with you to an extent, but I also think that that is the... You disagree with me? What? <laughs> what? Huh? <laughs> That's the boon of having both of us do this. No doubt. It's, if, because if, if it's you one get burnt out, usually yep. I'm, I'm, I'm not burnt out. Or when I'm like, uh, uh, yep. you're still I'm carrying it along. Yeah, no, that's true. And so like, two is better than one yeah, for sure. We can help support each other in that or like, it's not the end of the world. Like, it's not like, hey, there's right. no content for six weeks because the one person who's doing the channel is dead. Or, or on <laughs> right. vacation. Like, Hopefully not dead. No, but like if... Like, yeah, so I went on vacation this week yeah. and I didn't have any thought about wargaming. Now, I did tweet some stuff like post on the blog that came out and but like even if even if like I went on a slump like yeah. if I go on a reading slump I just don't read right right if if you go on like a I don't want to play many war games well I'm still doing some solo and yep. I'll like harangue you into playing one game yeah, yeah, and yeah. like I actually don't even know if we've ever had that problem there are times where I felt like Bruh. and so then we pull out alien yeah, I mean, there's been a couple. Right? Yeah, there's like, been a couple of times. Either we're tired or the wheat's been rough, and I, I think everybody knows this. Alexander is really the rule, the rule uh, uh, guru. I can't. And sometimes he gets tired, and I understand it. <laughs> I, I don't do. remember anyone's names, but I've read every rule. Yep. <laughs> yeah. And it's interesting. I think when we work together on it, you read them. I'll see certain things, or I ask questions. I always have felt I'm a good question asker. That's true. Asker. I agree with that. Absolutely. So when you say a statement, I have a thought of, okay, what about this? And then that causes us to think about it. But I think we work well in that regard, and because of that. But but I do think that has always been the logjam is the rules, right? Yeah. There are times where we want to play some of these big games, but we're like, my gosh, it has. 50 page rule book and so i have to study that for a week or two yeah and then it's like uh, and then like if something gets in the way and we don't end up yeah. doing it it's like oh i gotta get that somewhere and it's like it's, it's, it's hard very time consuming but, but anyway i i think seven years i think is a key milestone for us i'm very proud that we've been doing this for seven years yeah, and yeah, i yeah. i do look forward to it's kind of wild it is wild we're like close to 10 yeah, I mean, we're closer to 10 than we are to 1. I mean... Like, that's... Yeah, we're three years away from that. That's, that's insane. Kind of, that, that's that's madness. But it was just us, like, should we get a domain and just, like, write some little right. reviews? And it was so funny because we did it so quick. And then we had three of us, so we were all kind of dogpiling it. Yeah, pounding things out. I, I don't know, but seven years. And I look forward to another... I'm turning 50 the end of this month. You're 34? I think I will be... It's 2023, right? Yeah, I'll did be you 35 just, this year. Did you just say you think you'll be... Yeah, yeah. You don't know? No, I don't. Okay. Yeah. I, I, stopped, I stopped counting my <laughs> age a, a long time ago. So, I mean, I, I could do this for another 15, 20 years. Yeah. Not, now, it may not be as interesting because I'll be slower. <laughs> and, uh, but I, I have no qualms about trying to do this for another... 15, 20 years. As long as we're still enjoying it, we'll still yeah. do it. No reason not to. Yes. But uh, appreciate you all very much for sticking with us. And Thank you. I hope this was 
enjoyable. Uh, so let us know what your essential war games are. And uh, thanks for tuning in. I've been Alexander for the And I'm Grant.